G'day guys, Duckville here. Another game from my good buddy One Star. We're going to see him up against a pro gamer from a very well-known team. He's going to be here on the left-hand side in the blue. We are on the ladder, of course, so we got the nice little ladder colors there. Uh, he's over here in the blue. It is our good friend One Star just there. He's going to be against a really good quality Terran player who's made an appearance in the top 50 of the Korean uh, Grandmaster League consistently, very consistently, and was recently picked up by Quantic Gaming. It is Apocalypse. He's going to be over here in the red on the right-hand side, so we'll find out how this is going to go. I figured we'd do a, uh, we'd do a TVT. One Star sent me a bunch of really good replays against some high-level uh, against some high-level players here that he's faced on the Korean Grandmaster ladder. And uh, I figured I hadn't actually done a TVT in a little while. I think I've uh, been neglecting the mirror matches lately. I, I'm not sure if that's a, a reflection on me or on the matchups, but uh, we all know that uh, the odd mirror matchup can get a little bit interesting. Now, look at that. One star with a nice little star while he's getting ready to build his racks, and there it goes. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we'll, I'll try and see if I can find some more good uh, mirror matches. I know one of the big weaknesses I have is that ZVZ is uh, one of the, one of the um, more difficult things for me to commentate on just because of the fact that uh, I don't actually play Zerg that much at all. And uh, given that Zerg vs. Zerg is also a bit of a knife fight, as uh, many people refer to it as, with, uh, with the old back and forth with a lot of lings, a lot of banes, all that sort of thing, and it can get uh, r quite interesting to call those sorts of games. So we'll see what happens, um, and I hope everyone enjoyed their MLG weekend, which just passed by. Of course, congratulations to the winners of, of the all the games, and in fact, everyone that was there. It was a really good time uh, that was had by all, and I hope you would all agree. Back in the game here, we've got one star opening up with a... Uh, tech lab on the racks there, so he's going to be starting out with a little bit of tech. I would suspect he's going to go for a Reaper. It's uh, a, a general sort of tactic that I've seen him use against uh, Terrans that he faces on ladder. Um, so I would not be surprised if that is the case, and it is indeed. He's going to grab that Reaper there, get some good scouting out, and perhaps deny a couple of SCVs. Maybe he can get some kills. Maybe he'll be able to kill a Marine. I'm not actually sure about uh, if he'll be able to do that, but it could be part of the plan here if he can get inside and at least see what is being built here. Of course, you want to look at um, whether your opponent's gas have been taken. You want to see what uh, add-ons they have for their various structures. And if you can do that sort of thing, you can get in a really good position to make sure you can uh, adapt to what they're doing and, of course, counteract what they're doing, which is all uh, what a StarCraft 2 is about. Now, Reaper comes out and actually finds an SCV. Uh, he SCV is not going to get away at all, but does, this does give... Uh, Apocalypse a little bit of time to prepare for the incoming Reaper, of course. What you'd normally want to do is stick a Marine over here and maybe over here as well, just to make sure that you can prepare for him to jump up on that balcony and then up into the main. But it looks as if uh, One Star is just going to hang out inside the middle section of the map at the moment, where the Zelnaga Watchtower is, and Apocalypse is just going to have to bring back some of these Marines to make sure that uh, they don't get picked off, because they, they are standing out in the open now, and there is a second Reaper out on the map. So... Uh, this could get a little bit interesting from here, but now switching back into normal tech is one star. He's built that command center down at the natural expansion. A couple of extra racks on the way as well. Meanwhile, for uh, for Apocalypse, he's actually gotten up a factory here along with a starport. I would not be surprised if we see a Banshee come along because there is a uh, free spot at this tech lab and he can jump over there and get that Banshee started. So. We'll probably see that coming in from Apocalypse in just a second, and in fact, there it goes. Cloak is on the way, and a Banshee will start very, very soon. But two Reapers are going to come up through the back side of the base. They've snuck in. They've been sneaky ninjas and snuck through the back. One kill, two kill, three, probably four by the time they're able to get out of here. Uh, and in fact, they try and take down one of the Marines. Two Marines going down there. The Reaper's getting picked off. Well, one of them is picked off, and then the rest of the Marines trying to get across, and it looks as if this one guy will escape with his three kills, that is worth a medal, son. You can head back home. 
Um, so, not a bad start there for one star. He got a little bit of vision there of what's going on inside the base. Did he get vision of the starport? That's the thing I'm interested in. Yes, he did. So, he's going to be well prepared for anything that comes along. We'll see how he prepares for that. He's got an eBay coming up. There is Stim. It just started now. A couple of extra uh, reactors going on here to make sure that he can get a lot of Marines out. And just sort of preparing for that. Um, normally, what you would see is that a player will come along this side, maybe try and sneak in the back or be... Uh, sort of metagamey and try and come through this side instead. So what One Star has done is he's prepared the Marines just in this spot here. The other position you can get attack from is down along this path here and wow that's a perfect missile turret placement but in fact while we were talking about how awesome his marine placement was the Banshee does get inside gets two kills maybe gonna get a third here a little bit of Banshee kiting not gonna get too far around the backside because there is a turret there to detect despite the cloak and um, I think the one star he should be able to deflect this he does actually push the Banshee out for now the one scan is used up on that though so that's uh, one thing to take into consideration for that uh, defensive attack uh, defensive measure, but uh, one star doing a good job. Doesn't take too many kills, but in fact, the Banshee sneaking inside the middle section of the base where there is, of course, no detection from a turret. The main uh, turret detection is up at the mineral line and then down at the side here, but the Banshee does eventually go down. Uh, another scan going off, just um, using up as many scans as he can. Apocalypse taking away from the economy, of course. The scan could have been a mule. That's uh, just how it goes. And then the second Banshee actually gets caught out way out of position. A little bit of mismarker there from Apocalypse not ready to uh, see a whole bunch of Marines at the front of the base there and gets caught straight out and uh, we'll see if he's gonna he is continuing the Banshee production and behind this he has gotten a command center up at the uh, natural expansion gonna switch that into an orbital command as quickly as possible and now a tank is out and more tanks on the way siege mode also the next order of business here for Apocalypse so He's going to look to uh, get a standard sort of setup going here, making sure that he's got good defense. And in fact, may actually see another Banshee go down. Does one star find it? Yes, he does. Beautiful timing there. I'm not, obviously that wasn't uh, timing to be, just happened to be walking up through the map there, but it was really good to be able to catch that. But now he's going to run into a little bit of trouble. A siege tank up on the ridge can see down into the valley, and he's going to take some shots here. Two tanks should be able to defend against this. There's only a few Marines left over, and with the extra Marines from Apocalypse, this attack will have to fall back for the time being. Now... Apocalypse is uh, just slowly trying to get his economy back up. We've currently got a total of 33 SCVs for him. We've obviously got mules all over the place and 36 SCVs for one star. Now, he, that's because he has had the command center up a little bit longer than... Uh, then Apocalypse has had his up, but uh, we'll see if that makes a big effect on the game later on. We can see that One Star finally picking up his second gas. Not going to worry about the third and the fourth just yet, of course, when you're doing a big bio style here like this, when you've got a lot of Marines coming out. Number one, you don't want to get supply block. Come on, Mr. One Star, <laughs> what are you doing there? He's uh, got two supply depots coming up to make sure he can rectify that, but you don't need, you don't really need too much gas to be able to make this sort of bio style work, where primarily you're just investing 50 minerals per marine, so what you do need to do is make sure you're getting a good amount of SCVs down to get that good mineral income, and then you can uh, start looking at getting those tech sort of things up uh, a little later, so um, it looks as if Apocalypse even continued the extra Banshee production, gets a it gets a fourth one out, I think that is. It tries to pull that along down the bottom side of the map, but that gets caught out by that well-placed turret from One Star. I would say that's a really good place to put that. I, I would suggest that any Terran who's playing should uh, always put one in that spot. It looks really good and really handy, but uh, One Star is now pushed across the map. He snuck some SCVs, uh, some, not some SCVs, they're not SCVs, Marines across the map. He's got a couple of Marauders here to help to uh, soak up some of the damage, and it looks as if Apocalypse is going to find this very soon. He may just uh, creep across the map here with his Cloak Banshee, finds a couple of the Marines. They are in a very odd spot. He did not get to see the rest of the force that is up here. So Apocalypse is going to be wondering what's going on here. He hasn't really done too much scanning of what's going on inside One Star's base. So he's uh, got to be a little bit concerned about what's going on. He doesn't, doesn't look as if he knows exactly what's going on out the front. But uh, he does have three tanks prepared. So we've got, in fact, a fourth just comes along. 
uh, and there is even a fifth inside the main. So good um, preparation here from Apocalypse. He's going to be able to detect any drops that come across the side here. Should be able to stim across and cover this side as well. Uh, and has also got a couple of good tank positions here to make sure he can blast away at any of these bio units. But now he does know that it's out the front there. One star just probably waiting for a bit of an upgrade to uh, come along. He's just waiting for this plus one to armor to get done, I would say. And then he may look at trying to uh, do a little bit of an attack, but I probably wouldn't suggest it. He should know that those extra tanks are there, and that is not something you want to try and encounter on the battlefield as uh, one of these marines, because I tell you what, the shield things they have are not going to do too much against that. So one star is uh, still just powering along, dropping us uh, a... Uh, a little supply drop there, you don't see that too often, but plus two to weapons on the way. He's also going to get plus two to armor, I would assume, in just a second here. Continuing to produce a lot of marines, and finally some, uh, I believe that was some medevacs I saw. Yeah, it is. So we got medevacs coming out as well. So he's uh, really going to beef up this bio force here. Now, the one thing which I'm a little bit worried about for one star is that he hasn't really gotten too much of a tank force just yet. He's got one down here at uh, at the natural expansion just helping to defend other than that he's still producing more of them so he's uh he's gonna need i would really love to see him actually take the third as quickly as possible he's got a command center building here which is going to be able to do that but i think that uh maybe could have been just a tiny bit earlier what you need to do against uh this sort of um sort of a little bit more heavier mech is try and uh, take advantage of the fact that it's a little bit less mobile than a bio force but one star is going to have to deal with this attack this attack that's going to come through here both players scanning and finding out exactly the locations of their opponents and it looks as if apocalypse is ready to go he's got plus one on his weapons and around about six tanks around here as well along with a few of those medevacs as well steaming up and trying to run in to catch some of those marines we're going to lose a few of the marines of his own one star uh, perhaps just trying to uh, control some of the ground here and it looks as if both players want to try and control the high ground of course Anakin knows all about that but now the tanks are slowly starting to siege up here it looks as if one star will have a little bit of an advantage because his tanks are already sieged up despite having a low account and now one star takes down a few of the tanks that try to push through the middle but does lose quite a quite a bit of his bio force in the process but he has forced uh, Apocalypse to, to fall back for the moment here he's going to need a couple more more tanks if he wants to push up against this because as we can see here for one star he's got great vision across this whole middle section of the map and now with the tanks in position he can just continue to reinforce as we can see more and more marines streaming up through the map including an scv for some reason and tanks will start filling out the rest of this army once he's ready to uh start pushing in but a couple of dropships up at the top side of the map should have been detected by these very interestingly placed supply depots from one star check this out he's actually got them all over the map to detect these drops coming through and I would suspect that he is well aware that this uh, drop is going to come through the top side here and uh, just scanning out there it looks as if um, Apocalypse was uh, just trying to see if he would be able to drop inside but as with all these marines the tanks the uh, turrets that are here as well he's not going to be able to do too much at all so really liking the way that one star is zoning off the map what he's done is he's got the uh the sensor tower here to make sure he can detect where his opponent is and right now he can see that he's uh in this section here and we've got this nice little venn diagram of these uh uh, the sensor towers going on here but uh, the other thing as I said that he's done is controlled the airspace even if he loses some of these supply depots he'll know when the attacks are coming along and it looks as if he's going to do an attack of his own just pushing up to the right hand side I've seen one star do this quite a lot you just need to siege up in this area here and then you can start controlling some of the production uh, sections of the map here looks as if he's going to drop inside and try and uh, cover that with a big attack from uh, with a big bit of defense there against apocalypse just pushing across and it looks as if one star is going to be able to take down a lot of this production capabilities here we can see that he's got really good position here but apocalypse streaming in he's unseached some of the tanks they have moved it into position here but one star has targeted them down and he should be able to get rid of that last tank can he he certainly will be able to because there is another tank up on the high ground that does go down to the marines which are trying to push through but back inside the main losing the starport losing the tech lab he's probably going to lose a lot of these marines and maybe even the factory as well these uh two two weapons for all of one star's marines have really kicked in now and are starting to do quite a lot of damage and now there is one tank which may be able to hold the defense but it looks as if uh, one star has uh, had a little bit to do back at his own base there i think that attack was that no it was trying to drop through the middle there 
Uh, not really sure what the plan was, but one star has done a significant amount of damage here. We are now looking at an SCV count of 38 to 36, and Apocalypse knows that, and he GG's out. So, uh, great game there between these two high-quality players, of course. As I mentioned, love these uh, these sort of proxy supply depots to catch out drops, and then the zoning in the middle, and uh, doing a good job pushing across to take out some of the production from the low ground, and then slowly drop inside and get more and more damage done. So, great job from one star. If you want to see some of your own replays, please feel please feel free to send them through. I'll be tr I'll be uh, back on the uh, back on the casting chair for a, a little bit now. The MLG is over, so you can expect more games coming in very soon. Cheers.